Good morning, fourth graders. I hope you had a great weekend. It's Miss Brisson here. Happy Monday. Um, today, for our reading lesson, we are going to be starting a new book. It's called You Wouldn't Want to Work on the Hoover Dam, an Explosive Job You'd Rather Not Do. And you just watched a quick YouTube video giving you an introduction to the Hoover Dam, what it is, why it was built, and what decade or time period they built it in. So we are gonna go a little deeper, deeper with that and read this reference text. I know it doesn't look like a nonfiction reference or informational text, but it is. And we're gonna learn all about the Hoover Dam. We are also gonna be talking about the text structures that we've been focusing on the past couple of weeks. So we're really going to hone in on cause and effect, problem and solution, um, compare and contrast, and chronological order. So we are going to be tying all of those text structures in, and we're even going to do a little bit of main idea, which will lead into our next unit. What's really cool about this book is, like I said, it doesn't look like it would be a nonfiction text. Um, it's more in a cartoon base and you go on the journey as the worker. So let's get started. This was written by Ian Graham and the, the cool cartoon illustrations were illustrated by David Antrim. And right when we turn the first page, first couple of pages, we see our table of contents by page. So that's another clue right there, a nonfiction text feature that this is informational or nonfiction. Okay, so let's get started. Introduction. You are a construction worker in Amarillo, Texas in the 1920s. You have been working on construction sites since you left school nearly 10 years ago. You enjoy working outside even when the weather isn't great. Amarillo is doing well. Gas and oil were recently discovered nearby, so energy companies are setting up businesses and there is plenty of construction work to keep you busy. You are able to do most of the jobs that have been done on a construction site, from general laboring, laboring is just work, to simple carpentry and laying concrete. Okay, so there you are, okay? And I'm gonna read these facts below. You don't know it yet, but your world is about to come crashing down. It will happen suddenly and without warning. Soon, the United States will be overwhelmed by a disaster that will affect, there's a clue word right there, banks, businesses, and workers all over the country. It will change your life forever. You will find yourself in a different state working on one of the biggest construction projects in American history. So right now we have our first or our initial cause. Due to the problems in the US, our world is about to change. Okay. And eyes, and you can see right here. So soon the United States will be overwhelmed with the disaster that will affect banks, businesses, and workers all over the country. So I'm going to go up here to our chart. And I am going to put our first text structure. So that's page five. We've got cause and effect, and we have our first initial cause. So I'm gonna label that. It's gonna be clues from the text due to problems in the US. You probably just probably heard Mr. Brisson sneezing. <laughs> Sounds loud. Our world is about to change. A 
And we also know that um, an effect of that is banks are closing and um, people are without jobs, businesses are closing. So we're gonna read to find out why. All right, I'm gonna turn the page. And here you are, you're leaving Texas and it looks like you're going to Las Vegas. Okay, the crash. So now we're gonna find out what happened. New York City is about 1,550 miles from Armarillo. You have never been to New York, but events happening there will turn your life upside down. The New York Stock Exchange on Wall Street is a bustling hall where traders buy and sell shares in companies like stocks. Investors make fortunes, money, as share prices rise and rise during the 1920s. Then in October, 1929, share prices, those are like those stocks prices, suddenly drop. Wealthy people see their fortunes, all of their money, disappear overnight. Companies all over the country go bust, which means like go flat, go out of business, and millions of people lose their jobs. Many go on protest marches to demand work. All right, so we've got a lot going on. So basically the stock market in New York City crashed, leaving all of, leaving a lot of people out of jobs, a lot of businesses close. And right now, as you know, we are seeing that as well as a, um, an effect from the coronavirus. So many people lose their homes because they cannot pay their bills. They have to sleep on streets. Towns that don't have enough jobs for their own citizens put up signs telling the jobless people from other places to stay away. Many are so poor that they can't even buy food. Thousands stand in bread lines to be given free soup and bread. And you, I don't know if you've seen that on the news, but people are having to stand in food lines right now. And then up here, we've got our effect. The effects of the stock market crash spread very quickly. When the boss arrives at your construction site, you fear the worst. Banks start to fail and people rush to, make their, to take their money out. This makes a bad situation even worse. So yeah, people are trying to take all of their money out of the banks, but they're not having much success because it's already gone. And then here we go. We've got children march to demand jobs for their fathers. At this time, it's not common for women to work outside of the home. Remember how they had mentioned that there were protests. And I want to point out chronological order. So it's kind of showing you what is happening step by step once the stock market crash. So we've got the crash and then because of that, businesses are failing, which means that they have to lay off workers. Um, we also know that the banks are closing and because of that, people are trying to take their money out. People are protesting. So it's kind of going in a chronological order of this effect and then the trickle down. So we are gonna add that to our chart. I'm gonna go in green this time, change color. It's page six. And we looked at chronological order on that page. Sorry. I'm gonna put a little arrow here for the next one. I'm gonna draw a line. And so it shows step by step what happened. after the crash. We also saw a lot of cause and effect on this page because there were so many effects for our initial cause of the problems in the US, the world changed. So there were a lot of effects that, that took place because of um, the stock market crash.
All right. And then I'm going to read this handy hint. So, children march to demand for their fathers. Uh, we already read that. And then handy hint. Hitch a ride on a freight car to work, to look for work in other towns. So, it looks like you might be hitching a ride on a freight car, which is like a part of the train. Let's see where you go next. All right. We've got some good news. Good news. While you're traveling from town to town looking for work, you hear about an exciting construction project. The world's biggest dam is going to be built across the Colorado River. Arthur Powell Davis of the U.S. Reclamation Service thought of it. He suggested building a dam to supply surrounding states with water and to stop the Colorado River from flooding. It's such a huge project that six of the biggest construction companies in the United States join forces to build it. You set off for Nevada in the hope of finding work on the dam. So Las Vegas is in Nevada. So now we have our effect. We are having to travel to Nevada for work. So we're gonna talk, we will talk about that more in a minute. But remember our initial cause was due to the problems in the US, our world is about to change. So what do we have to do? What's the effect of that? Well, he had to travel and find work in Nevada. Okay. All right, so let's look here. Either too much or too little. Every spring snow melting high up in the Rocky Mountains drains into the Colorado River. The swollen river, swollen river, excuse me, overflows its banks and floods farm land farther downstream. So that's what happens when it floods in the spring. But then there's also the drought. Meanwhile, land farther away is, a dr is as dry as a desert. Farms are badly in need of a reliable water supply. So you've got some farmland that's completely drowning and then other that's in a drought because it's not getting any water. So, as you can see, there's a lot of problems with the Colorado River, and we've got our problem solution. Here's the problem, and then they are coming up with the solution of building the Hoover Dam. I'm going to read these last, this last part, and then we're going to be stopping here. So, President Herbert Hoover, hence where they got the name the Hoover Dam, has been the driving force behind the project since he was U.S. Secretary of Commerce. It, was taken year, it has taken years to get approval for the dam from Congress and from all the states affected by the plan. This has possibilities. And then here's your handy hint. Take plenty of water with you when you're traveling across the desert. It is very, very hot in Nevada. Okay, so we're gonna do our last page on our chart and then I'm gonna give you your exit ticket. All right, I'm going to draw a line. We've got page eight. This is another cause and effect. Now we've got the effect. We've also got, we've got two for this page. And the effect is that we are having to travel to Nevada to find work. Okay. All right, and that is your effect your initial cause. I'm just going to write effect right here. And then, like I said, we've got our problem solution. So there are two on this page. Draw my line to separate. Problem, solution, 
we set out the Colorado River was flooding. And so what did they do? That's your problem, your solution. They are gonna build the Hoover Dam. And you're gonna read find out tomorrow how they do that. So for your exit ticket, and this will be on the document as well, I want you to tell me when the Hoover Dam was built and why the Hoover Dam was built, okay? So when was the Hoover Dam built and why was the Hoover Dam built, okay? Those are your two exit tickets. You can put that in a Google document and send it to us, or you can write it down and take a picture. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow.